This is the Creative Funding Show, a podcast for authors, YouTubers, and podcasters who want to fund the work they love. Welcome to the Creative Funding Show. I'm Thomas Umstadt Jr. And with me today is Brian Cohen, the dashingly handsome co-host of the Sell More Book Show. Brian helps authors sell more books and make more money by helping them write better uh, book descriptions and uh, better market their books. And his podcast is one of the most popular podcasts in the publishing world. Brian, welcome to the Creative Funny Show. Thank you for having me, Thomas. Obviously, everyone will just have to assume you're uh, not blowing smoke with my with the handsome comment, but I uh, I'll, I'll take the compliment. I think you wrote that bio, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let it stand here. Uh, and you also have a Patreon page. You've been on Patreon for almost two years now, I think. You've been using Patreon since the early days, uh, which we'll get to uh, here in a bit. But I want to know uh, why did you start the Sell More Book Show? Well, I think it was at a time when I really wanted to use some of my skills that weren't getting used in writing books. I have a theater background, improv comedy background, and I love connecting with people via audio. I've done voiceover work before via video and such, and I didn't really have that kind of medium. And I, the the story of our show is kind of uh, my Jim, Jim Kukrell, he he was looking for a co-host, and I barely knew Jim, but I saw him posting on social media. I knew he had an audience from his author marketing club service, and I said, hey, I'd be interested. We had a little interview. I came up with the idea for the format to deliver the news, and lo and behold, we're at episode 223, so we haven't skipped a episode. You know, we take off every so often with one of us or the other, but the show hasn't taken a week off in 223 consecutive weeks. That's that's really impressive. And your format is a format that there is a lot of room for in a lot of other industries, which is a news and commentary format. There's a lot of political news and political commentary podcasts, but there's not a lot of news on X industry. And there are, you know, hundreds of industries that could support a very vibrant and profitable podcast covering the news from that industry. And uh, you do a good job covering uh, publishing news, especially indie publishing news. So your, your focus, uh, why did you decide to focus on indie uh, authors? Why, uh, why, why did you go that direction? Well, part of it was that Jim and, and I, while, while Jim has had a book traditionally published, he didn't have a great experience with it. And, and that flavored certainly our early episodes. I, I've never been traditionally published. So if the, if it's uh, write what you know, podcast what you know, I suppose we we had a, a lot more familiarity with the indie world, and I I feel like it was kind of our niche of a niche. It was not just publishing, not just indie publishing, but it was basically indie publishing for people who actually want to know what's going on, and and so our niche within a niche within a niche has been great for uh, both of our businesses. And has been great for we we force ourselves to learn what's going on because we have to report on it. Okay, yes. Yeah, speaking of business, uh, you use your podcast to cross promote your business. Uh, walk us through what that looks like. So when uh, we'd been going for about a year by by May 2015, which was when I launched my primary business, uh, the Done for You book description service for authors. And, and when we, when I launched Best Page Forward, I didn't have much of a email list. I didn't have, uh, any other following really than the actual podcast itself. So we, I, I promoted, uh, the, the business I promoted. I said what it was. I, I shared it. We didn't do too much pitching on the show. So this was definitely something that, if people were listening to the show, it stuck out and we sent it to our show's email list, which wasn't more than uh, a few hundred, maybe, maybe a thousand people, maybe not. But when we launched or when I say we, but when I launched that business, I had over a hundred orders in the first 60 days because our audience said, all this sounds like something I want to do, want to get involved in. I hate writing book descriptions. And so through the podcast, 
uh, we, we were able to promote that business of mine. And since that time, we've, I've promoted other sales I've had. We've promoted webinars. And I don't know if you're going to get to this at, at some point, but, uh, if you have it already in your notes, but, uh, we launched a live show. We launched a live conference based off of the podcast as well. And so from the podcast, we've been able to promote several of our businesses that have been tangentially related and some very related to the sell more book show. And how you did this, and I think this is really shrewd, is that you developed products and services for your audience rather than trying to find an audience for your products and services. You started by de- de- uh, developing the audience and then asking the question, what is it that these uh, people need? What is it that these fans need? What would make them excited? And finding those pain points of like, gosh, I hate writing book descriptions. I'd rather write a whole nother book than write a you know two paragraph sales pitch for my for the book that I've already written. And you're like, well, you know, here is a service that will relieve you of that pain. And uh, I, f- I feel like doing a live conference is kind of the coup de grave. You know, like, you know, you've built a tribe to a, a, a sustainable size and you can gather them in a real place, in a real location. People are willing to fly in. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, really exciting once you're able to do that. And it, I imagine it really helps grow the community as people meet in person, it makes them even more excited about what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they're... I mean, it it only cements the relationship more. You only hear a person. You still feel like you get to know them when you when you hear them. I mean, you know the the joy of podcasting. You, you get these people who feel like that that you're friends, even if they've never met you, even if they've never spoken to you. They've listened to you, and and that's already enough. But then they see you in person. They shake your hand. They they uh, they they get to know you. They share a drink with you, even. That is uh, even takes it to another level, and these are the potential true fans of those thousand true fans that they're always speaking of. I will say I don't fangirl very often. I've met some really famous people, you know, governors and political leaders, and you know, very cool, you know, celebrities uh, treat them very normally. But a podcaster, it's like this person is in my head in my most private moments. Right, I'm alone in my car, I'm alone working out, and this person's voice has been in my head sometimes for hours and hours. And the few times I have fangirled or like been speechless, it's been in the you know while talking to a podcaster I I really admire. So I know know what that's like. Uh, and it is uh, podcasting of all of the forms uh, is probably the most intimate uh, because of how privately it's consumed and how privately it's created, right? You're alone in a room typically when you're creating a podcast and people are alone uh, with their phone when they're consuming it. It's a, it's a very uh, intimate form of communication. And one of the challenges though with a podcast as opposed to say a YouTube video is it's often really hard to get comments. It's hard to get engagement. People listen and then they go on to the next podcast. They're away from their computer. They're driving. They're not in a place often where they can uh, engage back with you. And yet you've done a really good job. Uh, in fact, probably one of the best I've ever seen of a podcast getting listeners to comment back. You have a very active comment section on each one of your podcasts. How do you do that? What do you do to um, get people coming back? And we're very proud of that. I, 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 I definitely have chatted with Joanna Penn, our, our fellow podcaster in the self-publishing space, and she she's she was jealous of that and actually made some changes to her podcast so that she could uh, get more feedback and, and made it a whole uh, Twitter. Basically, she copied us. And, and that's great. I mean, you know, uh, it's a form of flattery for sure. So... When we have our weekly show, we always ask a question of the week that is related to the uh, one of the couple of main news stories that we had in the in the episode. And this is a question that is not just a yes or no. We have this open ended question and we ask our listeners to to comment on it and there's back and forth in the comments there is uh that there's sometimes people commenting on each other's comments and it's been so fun to see what the community talks about and what their opinions are on these issues and then we kind of 
get to learn more about them and, and hear more about them through the the answers. And, and we now have incentivized our comments a little bit. Uh, we, we offer a, a free uh, a, a, a giveaway for people who comment. We, we do a random drawing every week. So now we have an, an, even an extra reason for people to comment. And, and there's no shame in that. Uh, and the giveaway is one of the things you sell normally. So it allows you to kind of, in a very natural way, cross promote uh, this thing that you're already doing. And I think it's exactly, a, it's a great job of, of getting engagement and, you know, it's one, it's something very easy. And I notice YouTubers often will do this. Well, they'll have a question of the day. Uh, well, they'll throw out to kind of kick off the conversation. Sometimes they will give some guide guidelines on, you know, don't spoil the movie we're discussing or whatever. It's uh, very fascinating. But uh, so, so in terms of how you're monetizing the podcast, you're creating products for your uh, listeners and uh, services and events, but you're also on Patreon. In fact, you've been on Patreon for over three years. So you were early to the Patreon ba- bandwagon. Uh, why did you start using Patreon? At first, we really just wanted to dip our toes in the water. It was a, a new service at the time. It was essentially, we I like to refer to it as ongoing Kickstarter when people don't know what it is. And I wanted to see could we give some uh, small rewards to our listeners and could we use that to help fund the show? We almost use uh, probably almost 80 to 90% of the money we make from our Patreon goes right back into the show, goes to help us to gather the content every week. We pay uh, a contractor to help us find the news and find the tips. And so it's been really helpful to, uh, get more money for the show, certainly. And, and it proved the point that if we did offer some rewards, we could absolutely get some people to contribute to our program. Yeah. And I want to kind of walk through those rewards. You um, picked a per episode model. Uh, so real quick, before we talk about the specific rewards, there's two ways to do Patreon. You could do it per month and per episode. What was your thinking of picking uh, per episode? Partly, just from a business standpoint, you if you have four things coming in per week and you have a small amount that people are chipping in, it it, it ends up adding up. And, and we've had uh, some people paying $3 an episode over the course of a year. And and that has worked out to a really, a really nice that some that the people are happy to pay, but but that it, it adds up when everybody is paying together. All right. So you have two tiers. Uh, you've kept it very simple in terms of tiers. You have a $1 tier and a $3 tier. What do, what do you have in your $1 tier? So our $1 tier is they get uh, the author gets their book listed on our website. And they actually, after being a part of the Patreon for, I believe it's six months, we also have a couple of free courses that we send them. And that is an effort to encourage people to stay uh, patrons for longer so that they get additional benefits. And how do you manage that? And how do you know when uh, somebody has been a patron for six months? So we actually just go with dollar amount. Really? We look in the Patreon account. Uh, we, we check into it regularly and we see, Oh, well, so-and-so is now has, has passed a, uh, if it was a dollar an episode, that's four dollars a month times six, twenty four dollars. Say, oh, they're past twenty four dollars. Let's send them this. Uh, let Let's send them this reward. Or we we bulk uh, add a bunch of people together that are between twenty four dollars and what would be the next level, and and we send them the make sure that they've gotten the free courses that they've earned. Very nice. So somebody could donate more and get the reward faster and there would be no way for you to know <laughs> so uh but i guess it doesn't really matter because the main goal is that they've put in a certain number of dollars so whether yeah we don't mind if people are trying to game our system <laughs> <laughs> that that hasn't been a concern yeah and you know gaming the system by paying more money that's not exactly uh that's a feature not a bug. yeah we we win that game. <laughs> that's right okay so your next level is three dollars per episode um what's in this level so this is the fun one. This is this is the one that's really exciting. We get to 
actually read their book. We read their their book description, a pretty short description, aloud on the show, and we link to it in our show notes. And people love getting this. This was Jim's idea. This was this was Jim's best idea related to the Selmore Book Show. I I will uh, I will proclaim because he was right. People really wanted to hear their books uh, spoken about on the show to hear their books promoted on the, on the podcast sphere. And it's, I, I think people have really loved it. We've gotten a lot of great feedback about it, people excited about it. And so in, in addition to the earlier level stuff, they also get their, uh, they, they get the courses, they get them a little bit sooner. They get uh, some uh, other perks like, a book description after they've been a member for a certain amount of time from best page forward. They get an author marketing club membership after they've been a member for a certain amount of time. And so they, they get, they get the best of everything for our $3 level. And you do a good job of motivating people to stay members because a lot of these rewards, they don't get right away, yes. which is actually something I, I've talked with folks at Patreon. It's a, uh, like a pro tip that when you look at people who actually work at Patreon, their rewards are structured this way. And they're actually building out some features to make the delivery of um, timed based rewards more automatic. So it soon it'll be easy, easier for you instead of having to add up the dollars, you may be able to set up um, scripts within Patreon to automatically email people there. Uh, rewards. That's uh, one of the things I would love. Yeah, that. It's one of the things on, I would love in that. active development to to make your job a little bit easier. So I guess my next question is, why don't you have a more expensive, like a premium uh, highest tier? Well, I think, and and you've pointed this out to to me. This this isn't our uh, isn't one of our primary focuses. We've kind of shifted focus to our live event in in uh, Chicago that we're now going to do annually. I think that it wouldn't be hard for us to add a couple more uh, bells and whistles to it. Certainly, uh, but this is this is the thing. This is tough. I think you need to choose a focus for your monetization for your show. And for us, I would say the the focus has actually been our own businesses. Jim has promoted his happy book reviews uh, business, which was new as of last year. And I have promoted best page forward. And these have been the big things that we've used to monetize. I love Patreon. I've been very happy with Patreon. It's been a nice steady earner, but I have earned a lot more money from best page forward. I, I, uh, you know, my return on investment is higher from that. And so I have focused on that. And I think that there are so many options and you have done a great job of really, uh, with this podcast of sharing what those options are. But I think that much like with the Selmore book show, we don't want people to go use every tip they've heard from every episode <laughs> because they would go crazy uh, and they would use all their time and spend all their money. But uh, I think that if you have a primary source of income, you you stick with that and you emphasize it. I think that's a good way to think about it. Where right? Patreon is a tool, but it doesn't have to be the tool. And for you, it's really more of a way of making podcasting, the podcast itself, wash its own face in the sense of it brings in more money every month than you spend in all of the various expenses, but the profits come from your other activities. So the Patreon, the way you have it structured is just kind of break even, maybe a little bit of extra something, something, but it's not what you're living off of. It's your goal. Isn't to be like Patreon is what is paying the rent and the mortgage and all, and all of that. Yes. Yes, exactly. So uh, what advice would you have for somebody with a podcast who is looking to increase uh, their monetization, whether it was on Patreon or with something else? I think that it'll depend on the the type of podcast, certainly. But I think if you are considering a business that is related to your target audience, a business that your target audience would be interested in, like Happy Book Reviews or Best Page Forward, then consider doing a test run with your podcast. See if the listeners to your podcast and the subscribers to your podcast email list would be interested in what you put out. And if they are, 
then as your podcast grows, your business is bound to grow with it. And that is certainly something that me and Jim have experienced. Yeah, that's really good. And, you know, being willing to kind of think outside of the box, I think is really solid. And one more thing I want to note for people who have not listened to the Sell More Book Show, the show is not a big, long advertisement for Best Page Forward or for Happy Book Reviews. Those things get mentioned maybe two or three times across a 40 minute hour long show. And, and I think this is a really important thing to to uh, underline because you can't just have a 30 minute long commercial. <laughs> uh, people don't want to listen to that. That's not what builds a community. That's not what builds a following. The, the show itself has to provide value. And what's brilliant about a new show and why this is an idea that's totally worth stealing is that it, you every week you have new things to cover. And it's very natural to kind of organically work in mentions to your specific business while you're talking about the news. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, we kind of, you know, stumbled into the format, but it, it's, it's really gotten us a lot of trust in the community. When people uh, see a news story out there, they'll, they'll tag us on Facebook and say, I can't wait to hear what Jim and Brian have to say about this. And so that it's, Almost like the the show is fueling itself at this point. They help do your research for you. I remember one of the first shows I saw that was on this. It was back, I think it was 2007, uh, 2006. There was a young man who'd recently graduated from college. And he did a podcast on news in the en energy industry. He covered green energy. He covered fracking. He covered petroleum. Whatever was happening that day. And his was a daily news show or like a week daily news show. And it was Four or five minutes. So you just basically read the headlines of the um, what was going on in the energy industry. And that guy got snatched up very quickly into a very high paying job, I'm fairly sure, because he quickly became like the foremost voice, right? Because oh, that's awesome. Mainstream media covers the industry energy industry occasionally, but th they're not covering the blocking and tackling and like the details, right? Like that's not normally covered. And he was able to, with a, you know, $50 microphone, become a voice in an industry as a college graduate who didn't know anything about anything, but he was the one voice that was out there. And I think that that's a really powerful uh, format. And we need more micro news sources like that because you start to get become just the act of going through the news every week. Uh, creates in you a kind of expertise where you start to be able to see the long arc of where things were and where things are going. It's like, okay, Amazon has done things like this before. We talked about this last year. We talked about this two years ago. You know, these sorts of activities are not new and there's really no shortcut into doing that. And it's this uh, nice reward of covering the news ongoing. I agree. <laughs> To quote myself often from the Sell More Book Show. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, where can people find out more about you? I would love it if if they jumped over to uh, their favorite podcast listening device and, and, and app and go check out the Sell More Book Show. Uh, we release every Wednesday at uh, 7 a.m. Eastern. You can check us out. And if you're interested in finding out more about getting a custom book description, which is now the the primary source of podcast revenue for me, uh, you can go to bestpageforward.net. And we will have links uh, to all of that in the show notes. So in your app, if you just scroll down, uh, you'll see links to uh, Brian's Best Page Forward, his Patreon page, and his podcast. Brian, thank you so much for coming on the Creative Funding Show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>